What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me. Today's the subject is this Gengar design. The canvas size is 2000 by 2000 and there's a link in the description down below to the palette but all the brushes are just built in to procreate. If you're new here I post procreate content every single week so if you'd like some tutorials to follow along with hit that subscribe button down below and turn on the notification bell and if you can't get enough Joel Create content there's a link to my Patreon where you can get access to even more tutorials every single month and show your support down there and with all that said Let's get started. So as I mentioned in the intro, we do have this stencil. So I've added that into the middle of our canvas and we can use that to create all the different shapes that we're gonna need. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to our palette and in the palette, we've got a selection of colors for Gengar as well as his eyes and then his actual pupils. And then we've got some colors that we could use for the lighting effects. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this purple here in the middle of Gengar sort of body colors and then what we first of all we want to do is we want to try and create all the different shapes and then we're going to add in all the lighting so we're going to create a new layer then we're going to drag that layer underneath our stencil and on this layer here we're going to go ahead and draw in the main body of Gengar so it's up to you if you want to keep the stencil on or if you want to go for a freehand but we're going to go to our brush library we're going to go to calligraphy and we're going to use the monoline brush and what we're going to do is we're going to draw in his body to start with. So some of the lines, they do crease upwards, but that's just to give us later on an idea of Gengar's sort of body shape. So what you want to do is you just want to draw in all the different lines for Gengar, holding your pen nice and smoothly as we go around these lines and making our way all the way down. And then just go around the top edge here. So what we're trying to do at this point is we're trying to add in the top area of Gengar. So if I zoom back out, we've done the top area here. This arm, this arm, and this leg are all separate layers, but we're adding in everything else onto one layer. So I'll show you as we go around. So let's just add in all these points at the top. And you can let go, it doesn't really matter, as long as you can try and keep some nice smooth lines in there, that's all that matters. And then we're gonna go all the way up the ear again, up to the point, and then from the point, we're just gonna come all the way down into here. And if you make something like a mistake like that, it's just simple just to quickly just go back in and fill it in. Because at this point, we're just creating the outline and then we'll just drag and drop the color in. Now, as I mentioned, this arm's gonna be separate. So we're gonna come up this part here and link up and try and continue our momentum into this line here. So you could even start at the top if you wanted to. So we'll start up here. We'll just create the same sort of momentum and arc as both of them are and then just come in here like so. You could even hold your pen down if you wanna create a nice smooth arc. And then what you want to do is just link that bit up here, draw in the legs. You can either do this in one continuous line or you could break it up, it's up to you. I'm going to have to break it up. And let's go around the bottom of this leg, like so. And then let's go ahead and continue around the bottom area of the body. So we've got essentially a little tail here that we're seeing from the front view. Now this line here is the trickiest, it's the long one and it's the last one for him. Start at the top and go all the way around and then hold your pen down to get a nice smooth arc. So you're starting up here, you're going to go all the way around and then hold your pen down. You should get a nice smooth arc and it should get pretty close to the line that we've got on stencil. And if all your lines are now nicely connected you should be able to just drag and drop the purple in. And we've got the first big part of Gengar's body done. We're going to create three new layers for each one of the limbs. So let's create a new layer, drag it underneath Gengar's body, and then we're going to go ahead and work up here first. So we're going to go and start here, we're going to go down here, and then across his hands, and then down. And the only thing you need to bear in mind is you can't just leave it there, you've got to just link these shapes up. So you start point to your end point, and then drag and drop your colour in like so. And then we've got one more limb. So let's repeat the process again, create a new layer. Because this is all now underneath Gengar, you don't need to worry about adjusting all your layer positions. We're gonna move down to this leg and we're gonna go ahead and create that smooth arc here. You can hold your pen down again if you wanna get a perfectly smooth arc. And then just create these nice little feet. And then at your end point, you can let go and go all the way around to your start point and then drag and drop your color in because you create a shape that you can fill perfectly. And then let's move over to this arm here. It's up to you, you could create a separate layer. I am gonna create a separate layer. And then we're gonna go ahead and draw in this arm. So I might actually rotate my canvas the other way. I'm gonna go up here. 
across his hand and then come all the way down and then go around to your start point and then drag and drop your color in and then that's the main body of Gengar done we can now go ahead and add in all the different elements of the face so let's go ahead and above his body let's create another new layer let's add in the eyes first so we're going to select this color here on the second stack the top color we're going to zoom in and we're going to draw in the eyes so we're going to go ahead and start here so again these lines go a bit further just to show you where the body position is but essentially you want to go to here and here and that's it so we're going to start here we're going to go up to our point there and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw in the arc of gengar's eye and then hold the pen down at the end to get a nice smooth arc and then let go and then drag and drop coloring and then we're not going to do separate layers for the eyes we're just going to go ahead and over here continue to draw in the next eye so the straight line down there pretty much straight and then from your start point go all the way around the eye holding your pen down and just adjust it if you want to with an arc drag and drop your color in and that's the two eyes now while we're working on the eyes let's create a new layer and we're going to tap on this layer and clipping mask it now what that means is everything you now draw is clipped to the red eyes meaning you can't leave the boundaries of the eye so it keeps things nice and tidy and then we're going to go to this color here this green and then we're going to zoom in and we want to match up to these arcs here so we're going to go ahead and just draw in like so and hold your pen down if you want to get a nice smooth arc and then adjust it accordingly but then link up your shape by drawing a horizontal line and then drag and drop your color in like so and then move across and let's do the same on the other side with the green still holding your pen down if you want to to get a nice smooth arc and then adjusting the angle so it fits and again link those two together and drag and drop your color in now just because we've got the green we also need to add in a little bit of white so let's go ahead and we're going to go to the green layer we're working on and we're going to alpha lock it and then we're going to go ahead and change our color to white by double tapping in the top left of our disc and then on both these layers we're going to just match this arc here so i'm going to come down here and out the top holding my pen down link that up and then i have to just draw this in it's only a small area anyway it's all good and then let's do the same on the other eye so let's go across this arc here and then hold your pen down to get a nice smooth arc and then just color that in very quickly with the white and that is Gengar's eyes now done we can now move on to his mouth so let's go ahead and create another new layer at the top we will just separate these layers so we can edit them freely as we wish and then on this layer we're going to again just really go from here to here on the corners of his mouth we're not going to go up the edges again that's just to give you an idea on the sort of body of Gengar so let's go all the way around this line now this one here is an arc and a perfect arc at that so you can just hold your pen down when you get to the end and that's close and then what you're going to do is you're going to start over here and then go around the bottom area of the mouth again continuing to use that white for a minute go all the way around and hold your pen down at the end to get a perfect arc now when you create a perfect arc and you link them up you may get like a little bit of like spillage up there just grab your eraser tap on it and use the option under calligraphy of monoline which is what we're using and then I'm just going to erase just the end there just to tidy up that corner so just in case you get that issue as well and then drag and drop your white into the mouth that's good now what we want to do is we just want to go to that layer and we want to lower the opacity of it down for a moment to about 30% so we can see the lines of the stencil I provided and then we're going to create a new layer above it and tap on that layer and we're going to clipping mask it we're going to go to that layer and we're going to go to our colors we're going to double tap at the bottom of our disc to select black and then on these lines here we're just going to draw in some vertical lines through the teeth like so and i'm holding my pen down at the end every single time just to get some nice vertical lines in here you should end up with five in total now what we'll do is if we increase the opacity back up of the mouth all the way back up to 100 percent you'll end up with these really dark teeth lines but if we lower the opacity down of the black line layer that we just drew in lower that down to say let's go down to about 15 percent maybe you'll still get those lines in there but they're not so prominent 
Now that we've got every single shape that we need for this design, we can go ahead and start adding in the lighting and sort of the 3D effects of this design. So what we'll do is let's go ahead and add in your spotlights first, which is going to be the directional color and the colors that you select to actually paint Gengar in. So let's go up to our layers. I'm going to go right down to the bottom and create a new layer and drag it underneath the bottom layer. Now what we'll do is let's actually create a new one while we're here. So we've got two empty layers at the bottom. I'm going to go up to our colors and I've put some colors over here on the right hand side. It's totally up to you what colors you want to use, but some brighter colors tend to look pretty good and you want to try and avoid using something too close to purple. Now I'm going to use this sort of teal color here in the bottom left. So I'm going to go up to my brush library and I'm going to go to airbrushing. And we're going to use the soft brush and the brush size is set to roughly around about 35% and what you want to do is you just want to sort of tap in the middle of the screen and you'll get like a bit of a glow and it's in behind Gengar so we can't really see for a minute but if you zoom out your canvas and go to your cursor and use the uniform option if you scale this glow up and then move it down into the bottom left hand corner to the point really where these nodes here on the end of your box are sort of touching the lines of the canvas and then tap on your cursor when you're done. You've added like a bottom light here. And then what you can do is you can lower that opacity down if it's too much, say 50%, just so we can get an inkling as to where the light's coming from for a minute. And then on the other empty layer we created, let's go ahead and pick our second color. So for mine, I'm gonna go ahead and I might actually pick this red that we are gonna use for the eyes. So this color here at the bottom of the sort of second stack. But if you want to use the brighter colors on the right, it's totally up to you. The same principles apply anyway, it's fine. And again, you simply tap in the middle of the screen with your brush to get a glow and an orb. And then we grab our cursor, we scale that up, and then we sort of move it up into the top right again till both those sort of nodes on either side now are touching the edge of the canvas. You might want to scale it up if you don't think it's big enough. And then tap on your cursor when you're done. And you should end up now with your two spotlights on Gengar. So what we'll do is we're going to keep the stencil on just for a second just so you kind of get an idea where the edge of the shapes are. We're going to start adding in the color. So with the last color we had selected, it was this one up here in the top right. Let's go to Gengar's body and we're going to create a new layer and we're going to tap on that layer and we're going to clip and mask it. I always create new layers because then you can adjust each layer individually so that you don't end up adding it onto one layer and then you're forced to stick with it without painting back over it. You could adjust opacities and everything else in multiple layers. And then we're gonna to go to our brush library, continuing to use the soft brush. The brush size we're gonna reduce right down. I'm gonna go for something even smaller than that, maybe about 3%. Let's go for three, maybe four. And we wanna look where the light's coming from, so it's gonna come all the way across and it's gonna hit the edge of all of this area here. And we're just highlighting where it's gonna hit. So what we do is, this is called foundation coloring to start with. So you go very lightly, and just add in the color in that area, very lightly to start with and we'll just build that color up shortly as we make our way through it. Now, bear in mind the ear sort of comes down to here and where this sort of arc is, that's Gengar's sort of body shape. It's got sort of a curve here, if I was to draw it in, of his body. His ears are slightly further back. So you only really wanna bring your glow down to roughly here. And then let's do the other ear just to keep things nice and easy for a minute. So just adding in that glow nice and lightly across the top, bringing it round the ear as well slightly, so downwards and just adding in what I again would call foundation coloring. So just adding that in like so. And then these spikes, you wanna sort of layer your canvas or face your canvas if it's easier for you towards your light direction. And then you just wanna sort of drag from left to right very lightly, just adding in that color in those areas. So again, up here, maybe reduce your brush size if you want to for ex extra accuracy. Add in a little glow on the edge of this spike here, for example, and then push that light in down a little bit. Likewise, let's go for this spike here. Adding in that red on the sort of right hand edge of it, because that's where the light is coming from. And then moving it down by just blending it downwards. Like so. And likewise on the end of here too, maybe we can just add in a little bit of red. This spike here also will get the treatment. So a little bit of red on the end here, and then move that red downwards and inside of the body. And then when we zoom out, you can really start to see where that light in and how I push that light in down towards his body. And then if I increase my brush size to say four or 5%, I'm gonna just add in the curvature of his body. So roughly here is smack bang where that light is coming from. We wanna just create sort of a very light arc up here 
following these guidelines that I've put in here. You just want to sort of draw in that little arc, which will sort of really sort of show everybody where his body position is. And then come down the side maybe a little bit and you just build up your color. And if you can see already how much that lighting's already making a difference to exposing his sort of body shape. And then let's go around the edge here. So although it's a subject of Pokemon, it's a good way to practice your lighting and understanding lighting and building up the color as always. I should say that quite a lot in my tutorials. So if you're new here, that is something you might hear quite frequently if you stick around. But something like that is pretty good and you can see the sort of the curvature of his body. Now again, you can make some adjustments at this point if you want to before we move forward. Maybe sort of brighten up some of these red areas a smidge. We'll come back to them shortly afterwards anyway, and it's fine. Something like that is pretty good. Maybe you could even increase your brush size to say 8% and then just in here, just push that lighting down his body a bit more. So I'm pressing super lightly. If at this point you're sort of struggling and with the sort of pressure, just lower your opacity down of the brush. So you can use this toggle here and just scale that down. And I'm just sort of adding in that red in the top right area there and then I'm gonna add in a bit more here too. You can tell and see, you know, I'm not going straight in with the brighter areas, I'm really building the color up. So now we've sort of done the main body here, let's move down to the bottom and do the green, and then we'll move on to all the other layers around it, such as the arms, and then we can get rid of our stencil. So I ended up using the teal color here for my bottom area down here. So we've got a big sort of underbelly here of Gengar, and then his legs and his tail in the background. So to give you an idea, and I'm just gonna draw it straight in, we kind of wanna create another sort of arc. That's kind of his body shape. And then these layers down here, will get the treatment sort of here and here, in here. And that's kind of what we wanna try and achieve, kind of the same way we did the body shape at the top here. So I'm gonna undo those layers, and now I'm gonna to go to my brush. I'm gonna start off roughly around about 4% again. And let's just create sort of the main area of lighting. So let's just very lightly start at the bottom, build up the lighting around the belly around here that's looking good and then bring that color up now the teal might be a lot easier to overexpose so you want to be very careful with it if you chose the same color but something maybe like the green or the yellow will also have the same sort of effect the reds tend to be a little bit duller so you can get away with sort of blending it for a bit longer so you can already see how much we're starting to add in there let's take a look down here first of all let's reduce the size down to about two percent maybe and just add in a little bit on the edge and then likewise bring that around and then a little bit here as well and then bring that in as well. On his leg here we can start to maybe add in the colour around here and because now we've sort of outlined the sort of body shape maybe we can go ahead at the very top and turn off our stencil. That way now you can really start to get an idea for your body shape and I can see here I've got a bit of a gap just at the bottom here of this sort of belly glow that we've just tried to create and just add that glow in very lightly to blend that back up into the rest of it like so so on this bottom part here let's go ahead and just blend that color out maybe increase the brush size to about three percent three or four and just bring that light in around the bottom edge like so that's looking pretty good and then let's just curl that bit of light in all the way up to the top there maybe even just push it even further up something like that so that's actually looking pretty sweet. I might just increase the brush size and just blend this out a little bit further around here, just to really fade that nice and smoothly. And that's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. You could again, increase your brush size if you want to say like 8% and really just push that light in further up the body by just blending it up and in. But again, be very light with your brush strokes. Then what we wanna do is let's move on to the other limbs before we really start to punch out the edge highlights and really punch out the brightness of them. So let's go up to our layers. And the next layer is the arm on the right. So if I was to look at that layer and turn it on and off, you can see which arm it is. If you are starting to sort of worry about running out of layers, just alpha lock the layer and paint within it. But that will again, will affect your layer count and adjustments at the end if you want to. So I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna tap on that layer and I'm gonna clipping mask it. And then I'm gonna take a look at that object and what's gonna hit it. Well, it's only this lighting because his body is in the way of the teal. So we're just gonna add in some red. So I'm gonna switch out to my red. 
I'm going to add in the top layer of color first by reducing my brush size back down to about 5%, adding in that top layer of lighting like so. And then for the fingers here, you can really start to add in some extra sort of shadows by, let's make my brush size maybe about 3%, just highlighting the top of the fingers and then dragging that color into the body a little bit like so. And what that does is that sort of highlights the top edge of the finger, but you also end up creating a shadow underneath this top edge of the finger. So you end up doing two for one there. And then maybe the slightest bit of light in here on the end and just blend that out like so. And then that's looking pretty good to me. And we'll come back to that shortly and really punch it all out. Let's go to our next object, which is his leg down at the bottom left there. You can see flashing every time I turn it on and off. So we'll create a new layer above it. Tap on that layer and clipping mask it. We need to switch out to the tealy color because we've not really got any red that's gonna hit down here. And again, we're gonna do the same thing. So we're just gonna add in a very light layer around the edge, especially where we know the lighting's coming from. Again, you can create some creases in here. So you can sort of push this light in, in here, follow the momentum of the sort of the knee. And then when you add the highlights on the edge of the toes, you can create shadows and highlights at exactly the same time. See that I'm only doing it on the left hand side of the toes, which creates a really cool sort of extra level of detail in there. Let's increase the brush size a smidge, so about 3%, and just blend in some even more brighter areas in the top area of the knee. Pushing that lighting round, and then adding a bit more down here too. That's looking pretty sweet. I think you could maybe get away with adding in a little bit more lighting, but that's pretty good for now. And then the last object should actually be his other arm. So we're gonna to go to that layer and turn it on and off multiple times so you can see where it is. Let's create a new layer, tap on that layer and clipping mask it. Now this layer will do a little bit of teal, we'll also do a little bit of red. Potentially it's just coming in from behind. So looking at where the lighting is, it's here. So it's gonna come all the way up and bang, it's gonna hit that side there. So we're just gonna add in that highlight underneath the arm. So something like that. Reduce your brush size to something a bit more accurate. And again, on the fingertips, you can get away with now adding in the sort of brighter tipped areas there and create those shadows and highlights exactly at the same time. Something like that's pretty cool. Let's now switch out to the red because we can just add a bit of a glow on the top area here. So again, just repeat the process, so adding a bit of a glow at the top. Just be pretty light with this one though because it's quite far away from the lighting source. But again, with the fingertip, you can maybe just add in a little bit of brighter area up there. Likewise, you maybe get away with just double toning this particular finger by reducing the brush size right down and getting a double tone of color on that arm, which looks really cool. So you've got basically the principles now of everything to do with him. Let's first of all just quickly add in some effects in the eyes and then we'll come back to all of our highlights and shadows there on the outside. So let's go to the eyes. And the first thing we're going to want to do is let's go to that layer on the eyes, tap on it, and we're going to alpha lock it. That means now we can only paint within the boundaries of it. Now on this occasion we are going to do that because we've got other layers that are involved in this process. So I've got the dark red already selected, but you want to select this dark color on our stack here. And then with our brush size set to about, what size is that? About 3%, that's pretty good. We want to add in a top shadow here to just underneath the eye. And then you also want to go around the bottom of the eye and then very lightly towards the center, this area here in the middle, I'm not actually drawing right now, that needs to be nice and bright. So you want to try and go around the outside like that and then create that sort of 3D eye look to it. And then the same over here, let's go ahead and go from left to right, add in that sort of under shadow and then go around the surface of the eye, the arc of the eye even. And then let's just darken that area up like so. And then you should start to see a lot more of a 3D effect to this. Now while we're on the eyes, let's actually create a new layer and tap on it and clipping mask it above the green sort of pupils. So you're gonna change our color out to black by double tapping at the bottom of our color disc. And then what we wanna do is we kind of wanna replicate the sort of line that we created up and down here, but in a sort of arc motion. So something like this, so left to right, creating a little bit of an arc, which will create more depth in the eye. And then the same here as well. So I'm just gonna create like a, like an arc here and then that creates a bit more depth in there, which looks really cool. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in a highlight. So while we're on the same layer, let's just switch it out to white and double tap in the top left of our disc. 
reduce your brush size down to maybe about 2% and on the bottom edge here and then just create sort of an arc in the bottom corner of the eye just to create a little highlight and that will make it look a lot more 3D and just blend that out and you'll end up with a really cool little glow in the eye there and let's do the same on the other side same direction really this bottom edge here let's add in that little highlight just to really punch out the sort of 3D look to those eyes and just make sure they match up so my left one is slightly duller than the right one and go back in and just up those highlights now let's go ahead and on the original bottom layer the orange layer here for the eyes swipe on it to the left and duplicate it and then the bottom one tap on it and turn off the alpha lock and then go up to your adjustments Gaussian blur and layer and swipe from left to right and you want to go to roughly around about 11% is pretty good and tap on your adjustments when you're done and now what I'm trying to just give is a bit of a red glow around onto his body from the eyes there now let's move on to the mouth and add in a shadow in there so we're going to go to the mouth layer at the top here and we have these black lines we're going to create a new layer above those black lines and tap on it and clipping mask it then we're going to go to our colors and double tap to select black and then what we're going to do is we're just going to add in a shadow towards the bottom edge so just going backwards and forwards creating a little shadow on the inside of the mouth like so going backwards and forwards backwards and forwards to create that little inner shadow there like so and then you just want to blend that out nice and lightly on either side now don't worry if you go a bit too hard with your shadow you can always lower the opacity down of the layer so if you want to just tap on the N and lower that down and just make sure you end up with something like that is pretty good so now we've changed the elements of Gengar let's go ahead and change the highlights and punch them out a lot more so what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our layers and then on each layer we're now going to work on we're going to change the layer effect to add and punch out a lot more of the colors so let's go to the body layer first turn it on and off to be sure we're going to create a new layer above and we're going to tap on it and we're going to go to clipping mask now we're going to do the reds first so i'm going to change the reds to add because red is quite a dull color so if you chose red maybe change your layer effect to add but if you're not sure just go with normal and then see how you get on but I'm going to switch my color back out to the same red and then what we're going to do is we're going to start emphasizing some of these highlights so on the edges of Gengar they'd be really bright so something on the edge here and because we've got the add layer effect on it's going to really really brighten up those edges and punch out those colors so you can see the difference between this and this we've got a really bright color now and it's all going to start to come to life so again let's just go over everything essentially that you already drew so maybe reduce your brush size down in certain areas and you're just going to go back over all your sort of brighter areas that you already drew in as i mentioned and punch those colors out so here as well on this little spike we're just going to add in those colors and again every time you add in a highlight you can also try and get away with adding a shadow and that will really add some cool detail to your design and then adding in those brighter head edge highlights especially right on the edge you know press quite firmly on the edges there punch out those colors and then just drag that lighting down by constantly going back over yourself and punching out the colors maybe you increase your brush size in this particular area like so you end up with a nice bright area like that this little spike at the top here you can do with some love so maybe a little bit on the end there and then a little push down but again make sure that your lines are nice and soft and if you go too hard you'll end up with something as i just did prior where you end up with too much of a bold line that looks good let's move on to this one here and i just keep differing between the brush sizes depending on the area i'm in and how comfortable i am with the brush size so that i've got full control over where i'm painting it in that looks great let's move on to this top edge here so my brush size I can increase back up to something a bit bigger about three and then just paint on that top edge really blast out those highlights and then push them down and around the ear slightly like that that looks cool and then let's work on his body as well so on the same layer again just be very gentle to start with and then backwards and forwards just creating that arc and punching out the color And you might not see too much of a change because I'm pressing quite lightly. But you will start to see that build up of colour. And then just adding that in, bringing it down his body as well. And then 
we want to really start to punch out the lighting just here just on the top of his head sort of really show where that lighting is coming from and create a nice smooth arc up here for the body shape until you end up with something like that that's what you want to try and end up with a nice bright area at the top and these really cool extra highlights now what we're actually going to do is before we move on Gengar also has some extra darker colors in the palette so I'm going to go back to the body shape I'm going to go to my colors and then we're going to use this color here in the bottom left of our palette and then we're going to drag and drop it into Gengar's body now that will darken him up a little bit but it will start to sort of emphasize your highlights a bit more make it look like a much darker room than it, he is in potentially and I'm going to do that for all the limbs now I'm going to go back down through my limbs for a second and just drag and drop the color into each one so that arm I can see this leg, just turn them on and off if you're not sure. Drag and drop that color into that space. Then let's go to the top left hand as well and drag and drop it into that space. Now let's go ahead and while we're working on the body, which we were working on, let's create a new layer above and tap on that layer and go to clipping mask again. So we'll end up with three layers clipped to the body of Gengar. I'm gonna to go to the colors, I'm gonna to go to my teal. And again, it's up to you if you wanna to go to add. Me personally, it's quite a bright color anyway, so you might not want to use the option of add. So first of all, I'm going to do exactly what I just did there a second ago of adding that edge highlight. So starting outside the body and then coming inside the body. I'm going to come around the bottom here and then go back up and then right around that edge, just add in that undertone where it's a lot, lot brighter. And then again, you should brush those down and maybe just punch it out and blend it out. Being super light with this. And just add in those brighter colors down towards the bottom area. That looks pretty cool. Let's do the same for these smaller objects. So reduce the brush size down and just add in an edge highlight. So just be very light, get back on yourself and then build up that color. And then again, a little bit here as well. Just adding in a little extra highlight there. And then let's go ahead and on the leg, add in that brighter edge highlight and then blend it out into the body. That looks pretty cool. And adding in these edge highlights will really start to punch out the color and how much it's affecting the body shape. And then I'm gonna move on to the next object. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next layer, which if I scroll down is the arm on the right hand side that's just behind my layer. So I'm gonna go to the orange layer that I've got above it I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. I'm going to tap on that layer and clipping mask it. I'm going to go to my colors and the red. And then I'm going to go ahead and with my brush size set to about 3%. And then on that layer, let's change the style down to add. And let's try and copy this, but on this arm. So punch out the top colors here. And then I'm getting further and further into the shape of the arm. So you can see there, I was just building my way up and in. Likewise, let's reduce the brush size down again and do the same on this finger here to push that color out like so and just add in those really cool edge highlights which really emphasize that lighting. Now let's go ahead and let's change out to the next shape down which if we take a look is actually the leg in the bottom left. So we're going to go to our layers for that leg and create a new one above it. Tap on that layer and clipping mask it and let's change that color out to the teal. And again, from this point, I'm not gonna go ahead and add in any add effect, but I'm gonna reduce my brush size to, let's go actually about 3% and just punch out that brighter edge here. And about 2%, just bring that highlight around and onto the top of the foot, and just punching out those colors. Likewise, let's just punch out the colors on the feet and on the edge here as well. And then maybe a little bit in here. But when you take a look, you should end up with those bright highlights just where the lighting's facing. Let's take a look at our next layer. Let's move that across. It should be this arm in the top left-hand corner. Let's create a new layer above it, tap on it and clipping mask it. Now, first of all, we're gonna use the teal, but this layer also has a little bit of the red on it. So we're not gonna do a layer of add effect. We're just gonna Add in that teal just underneath the edge here and again right on the edges just really punch it out if you want to and then reduce the brush size down and then just add it in on the end of the fingers here and likewise on the end of this finger here too 
that looks pretty cool. And then let's go ahead and create a new layer above that, tap on that layer and clipping mask it and change the layer option to add. And then when we go back to our red for this example for me, I'm gonna emphasize those red areas. So punch out that red there and then increase my brush size and just increase the red here on the edge. Keep coming inside the body like that a little bit more and inside the shape, just emphasizing that red. And then if we take a look at our finished design, if I zoom in and go full screen with four fingers, we end up with our finished design for today. So it's a little dual toning lighting tutorial just to help practice with a subject, which is Gengar for today. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please drop a like down below. It helps the channel out an awful lot. And if you didn't know, I post Procreate content every single week. So if you want some tutorials to follow along with, hit that subscribe button down below and turn on the notification bell. And if you want even more Joel Create tutorials, there's a link down below in the description to my Patreon where you can get access to even more tutorials every single month, as well as extra benefits on my Discord server and sneak peeks of upcoming tutorials. Be sure to share your designs with me on Instagram. The links to all my socials are in the description down below. And with all that said, I'll see you in the next one.